Hi friends and fellow flute enthusiasts. In this episode of Johnny's Flute Reviews, we're going to be looking at a massive flute. The flute that I hold in my hands is a flute made by Craig Noss of Fire Flutes. Um, this is a really large flute, one of the largest in my collection. Um, it's tuned to the key of G. Um, it has only four playing holes in it. Uh, it's made from bamboo, it's been charred. The really cool feature about this flute um, is the um, slow air chamber and the design, uh, the mouthpiece design. So. If you look here, you can see that there's a smaller piece of bamboo on uh, the side of the flute. And I blow into a hole here. And what happens is um, this becomes part of the slow air chamber. So when I blow in here, air travels up here and goes and connects into um, the main slow air chamber here. And then it operates and moves through um, the slow air chamber over the ramp and over the flue area into the splitting edge, just like our normal uh, modern Native American style flutes. Um, and what this does is, many of you uh, may have experienced this in playing bass flutes, is that uh, they get so long and far away, uh, the holes so far away from your mouth that you're um, extending your arms too much and it becomes a little painful and uncomfortable, or maybe you slip and you're not quite getting those, um, that bottom hole closed, you get a little squeak. So what this enables uh, me to do is to, to alleviate that stress in my wrist. So Craig did a really great job about thinking about the player. Um, and the other thing about this that I really love too, of course, with the flutes made from bamboo and when either the um, holes are burned, in the flute. Uh, this whole flute has been charred. So what happens is when I blow into it, this aroma is filled around me of this um, beautiful bamboo smell. Um, there's nothing like it. And I just love this smell. My very first flute that I had um, had the same characteristic. So it brings me back to my first flute. Um, and uh, a really cool, cool feature. It also with me being right here, um, this is a quiet flute, so with me being here, it puts me more in line with where the sound is produced uh, in the flute, um, so it enables me to hear it a little bit better. Now it is a quiet flute, um, so in an acoustic room it's not very loud, but I love to play this with amplification and reverb and that kind of thing, and it's super, super mellow, a beautiful flute. So I'm gonna uh, play a little bit on this flute. You may have seen this one in um, a video that I did about the 15 flutes used in Migration, a new project um, that uh, was just released in May. So uh, check that out as well. You'll see this bad boy featured there and it's on the recording from uh, Migration, a song called Poets Awakening. So four playing holes and what I do is, because there's such a stretch here between these, is I just use my index and ring finger. Uh, I keep my uh, middle finger there just as a pilot, so that way I don't miss uh, this one, for example. So you'll see me, um, I'll have a little pinch here between my thumb and middle finger, uh, and that's to help me lock in that and not lose it. And then I replicate that same thing up here. So I'm gonna keep my middle finger there. I could use the two here. Causes a little discomfort between these two because of spacing and just how big around this flute is. Um, so I like to you know, ease that up a little bit, keep my middle fingers down on the flute and play these with um, my index fingers and ring fingers. So here we go.
It is very soft and quiet and really sensitive on that bottom note. It makes it easy to overblow. Um, but if you're not aware of where that limit is, you can easily uh, be blowing too hard as you come down to that bottom hole and have it break into the octave. So that's where I really uh, talk about this a lot with my students uh, that I teach is to keep your mouth open and large on the inside and to where if you blow through uh, through your mouth that your cheeks would be able to puff up and that really helps give more support to the flute because if you're forcing all that breath through the flute and you aren't able to take any back and receive some of that pressure or that resistance back into your mouth uh, what happens is it's going to crack into the upper octave and you're not going to be able to recover that easily. So uh, we spent a lot of time talking about that and if you have questions about it feel free to uh, send me an email or uh, look me up on Facebook. So again this is the Poets Flute. Uh, it's made by Craig Noss of Fire Flutes um, and it's just a beautiful beautiful flute. I uh, appreciate you tuning in to this episode of Johnny's Flute Reviews. Stay tuned and please subscribe as we uncover more flutes from my collection. See you next time.